Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to the second shelf and yes to another book haul but kind of a special one. First of all there are more than my usual seven books, 12 in total, and it's my birthday book haul. So none of the books I bought in the strict sense of the word, if you know what I mean. The first four were sent to me um, by friends and the next seven I actually bought bought myself, but with a gift card from another friend. So best thing ever for your birthday. And yes, it was my birthday in July. And thank you for those of you who uh, send me wishes, birthday wishes. I really appreciate it. So birthday book haul. The first two were gifts from my friend Adam, who, you know, I'm reading, we are reading Ursula Le Guin. We're making our way through her work. Uh, we are now in the middle of the Earth Sea cycle. We're reading the second book at the moment, Tomes of, Tomes of Atwan. And he gifted me fantastically to way too much, of course, but Adam is a very generous person. Uh, so he gifted me this beautiful um, library of American America edition of her poems. We will hopefully also read her poems at some time, at least part of them, Adam, right? Um, and this one that I had no idea existed is a um, um, con with David Naimon, Naimon, and it's conversations on writing. So it's basically interviews, her talking is this the right one? Yeah, talking about writing. And as I admire, you know how much I admire Le Guin, and I'm a writer myself. So this, yeah, perfect gifts, the, the collection of poems. And look at this beautiful picture of her. Isn't that fantastic? And a book uh, about uh, Ursula Le Guin talking about writing. And another friend, Heidi, she also sent me books <laughs> and two fantastic books, also too much. But, you know, my friends are really generous. So thank you again, Heidi. And the first one is uh, Jasmine Donahay, Birds Planning, Nonfiction, uh, and Natural History. Uh, Jasmine Donahay is a Welsh author and she, I think she uh, was studying English and then worked in publishing. And this, she wrote a memoir before, but I haven't read that one. <coughs> Excuse me. And this one is about bird viewing from a feminist point of view. And it's a combination with a memoir. Um, also, while uh, the author is in hospital for, uh, for a while. And I've heard really, really great things about this. And Heidi loved it. And I haven't gotten around to buying it or reading it. So this is fantastic. Um, and the other book she sent me is Fiction, um, Michelle Gallon, Factory Girls. This book was published, um, let me check, uh, 2022. Yes, last year. And the Bird book was published this year, by the way. Uh, the other one, Bird's Planning. And this is, um, Michelle Gallon is an Irish author, so that also fits a project of mine that I'm doing with Kim. Kim, have you read this one? If not, maybe we can buddy read it uh, to read Irish female authors. Um, and Heidi really liked this book, but she also sent it to me because it has a similar theme as a book that we both didn't like much, uh, Kennedy, Louis Kennedy's book, Trespasses. So this is set towards the end of the Troubles, 1994, in Ireland, and it's um, Maeve Murray, and she and her friends, Carolyn um, and Eifer, uh, Irish name, I'm sorry, butchered it. I <laughs> didn't know that there was an Irish name in there, otherwise I would have checked. Uh, but anyway, they work, uh, they take summer jobs in a factory, and then tension rise, and it's supposed to be funny, but also have serious themes. And like I said, Heidi said, this is a similar book theme-wise as Trespasses, but a good one. So I'm very much looking forward to this, um, to this as well. And then the books that I bought uh, from a gift voucher that I got uh, from um, one of my friends here in, uh, well, he's not living in Cologne, he lives in Amsterdam. Um, and I bought seven books. 
The first one is a collection of essays by Susan Sontag on women. This is this was published this year, earlier this year or last year, but it's um, the obviously Susan Sontag is dead, so there's not new essays, but it's the first collection about with, with, that brings together essays on women that Susan Sontag wrote. So I thought that was fascinating. And if you follow my channel, you know Susan Sontag is one of my all-time heroes, uh, one of my leading ladies, as I call them. Um, and I will be reading this book as a buddy read with Kathleen, uh, from Kathleen Anne, because we are making our way through feminist literature. So I'm really excited. Uh, I haven't even checked how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven essays. So fantastic. Um, then I bought um, Eleanor Glynn, Three Weeks. Uh, this is one of the books on my 1001 Women I Want to Read Before I Die list. Eleanor Glynn was the first it girl. There's also um, an autobiography coming out called The First It Girl, or it is already out, but I'm waiting because I'm cheap that it comes out in paperback, um, which I'm certainly going to read. Eleanor Glynn was an American author, and she lived 1864 to 1943. And this is a scandalous novel. Um, published in 1907 about a, a woman, a promiscuous woman and her shenanigans. And I I don't remember, maybe Heidi, you remember, that we came across this book in another book we read. And then I immediately wrote it down and I thought, this author has to be on the 1001 list and I want to read this one. And it's Virago, which is also a project, as you know, in 2023, uh, to read back um, books from the backlist of Virago Press and also the feminist press. But anyway, so three weeks. And then um, f for August, first of all, small books. I bought a couple of small books, but also Women in Translation Month. So I bought this beautiful, can you see that? Yeah. Um, Anna Akhmat Akhmatova, um, selected poems translated from the Russian by D.M. Thomas. Uh, I am, she's on the list as well, of course, Anna Akhmatova famous Russian poet. I'm always trepidatious when it comes to reading poetry in translation because I think, I mean, a lot of stuff gets lost in translation anyway, but with poetry in particular. And, but I, I have to read the translation because otherwise I could only read poems that are originally written in uh, French or Dutch or German or English. So I would say two thirds of the world or 90% of the world would escape me. So I'm, I, I'm hoping that I can't even judge, of course, whether the translation is good because I can't read Russian, but I'm really looking forward to this one in August. Um, the next one is a book that I came across and I don't think it's on the 1001 list. Let me just check. Um, yeah, it is. It is. Okay. I, I think I put it there later. But I came across this book uh, on Kim's channel from middle of the book March. And she raved about it. And that is now in November by Josephine W. Johnson. She was an early 20th century author, died in 1990. And this book is about, um, uh, she was the youngest Pulitzer prize winning author and this book was published in 1935 uh, or 1934 and it's about a farming family uh, in the depression era and hardship in, in this time. I mean the cover looks like you know a beautiful life. It's, it's a beautiful cover but it's not a life it's not a book about a beautiful life, or at least not a life that is easygoing. It's a book about hardship. But Kim was so 
um, raving so much about this book and I had to put Johnson, of course, on the list. And then I, I bought this book. Um, the next one is also for Women in Translation Month, a Catalan author from the 19th century, um, early, late 19th century, Emilia Pardo Bazan, uh, the House of Ula, let me just, yeah, here, <laughs> let me show you the book first, uh, here, The House of Uloa, Ul Uloa, and it's translated by Paul Opre and Lucia Graves. So this book was published in the 19th century, 1868, 1868, and this, this edition is quite recently published, I mean, 10 years ago, 2013, but more recently than the original. And it is about um, Father Julian Alvarez, who is sent to the country uh, to look after uh, uh, the, the affairs of the Marquis. But that person is quite irresponsible and a libertine, as they said back then. So he has, um, a, he leads a sinful life and, you know, I think this is probably Father Alvarez uh, on the cover. And then plot ensues from there, and it's also not a happy tale. But this is also on my 1001 list. I think it's the only Catalan author from the 19th century that I have on the list. Not sure I will get to it in July, even though in August, even though it is August uh, Women in Translation Month, but we'll see. Um, the next one I will most certainly read in August because it's tiny. And as you know, in the 30 books in 30 days challenge in August, I try to save small books that I want to read over the course of the year. And then I, because otherwise I don't make it to read 30 books. Um, so this is also on the uh, 1001 list, Rebecca West. Um, she was, let me see whether I can have her birth dates. Yes. End of the 19th century, 1892 and died 80, 1983, uh, in London. And Rebecca West is her pen name. And this is, uh, about a soldier returning from the war, as the title says, um, heavily traumatized Chris. Baldry turns from the trenches so badly traumatized that the last 15 years of his life have been expunged from his memory. And there's a blurb by Pat Barker, who also wrote a fantastic trilogy about the war, uh, Regeneration. You, of, you know that, of course. So this is certainly going to be uh, read in August, uh, even though it's not an easygoing read, but it is short, just under... It's 130 pages. And the last one I bought with uh, Victor's voucher is another Ursula Le Guin, uh, her novel, 1985 novel, Always Coming Home. Um, I love these masterwork editions because they are so hideous. I think they are they're cult. <laughs> they're, they're, it's just fantastic. I have most of her books in the sci-fi books, at least, in these editions. And whenever I come across a book in this edition, I have to buy it. And always coming home, I haven't even, I, I don't, haven't owned it even. I mean, I would buy a Masterworks edition, even if I own the book already, but this one I don't own. So this is, in, like I said, 1985 uh, novel. I'm sure that Adam and I will read this at some point. I have no idea when. This is a more or less a standalone and it's about the Kesh, um, a species, a tribe, a nation, people, a group of people. And it's a combination of um, poetry, songs, um, you know, uh, stories, and quite extensive. Here you have some, uh, the five houses of the earth. So family trees. Um, so it's it's quite a an extensive. It has also a, a glossary with with words, um, and I think in this 
the, the way this book is made, it's one of a kind in Le Guin's work. So I'm really curious how, how this will work for me and for Adam once we get to it. So these are the 12 books, um, which is not too bad for a birthday. I mean, my normal kind of average, you know, books that I bring into the house is about seven-ish, as you know, if you follow the, the book hauls. But to be fair, I have to say, I still have another unused voucher from another dear friend of mine in Cologne, quite a substantial amount, and I haven't bought books yet, so I guess there will be five, five-ish, six maybe even books still coming, and I will buy them. Uh, I have to order them from an independent bookstore here in Cologne. Um, and when I order English books uh, with them, it always takes a while. So I will, I don't know whether I will film a second part of this birthday book haul for those books, or I will just film it towards the end of the month as the August book haul, because I don't, I will not buy any additional books, I don't think, for August. But those are the 12 for now. Thank you, Adam, and thank you, Heidi, for sending me those books. It's fantastic. I was really happy um, um, with that. And Adam also included some notebooks, by the way. And you know how much I love notebooks. So that was fantastic as well. But this is a book haul, so I'm not going to show those. Anyway, thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Adam, for the books. Thank you very much for watching. And oh, thank you, Victor, of course, for the voucher. Uh, thank you for watching. Looking forward, as always, to your comments. Um, I hope you enjoyed this birthday book haul. And I will talk to you all soon in the next one.